I hope this finds you doing well, uh, rapidly coming uh, into the uh, end of the year and um, Christmas uh, as we celebrate the birth of our Savior coming up. Um, and I was looking through this Sermon on the Mount over and over again and the passage I wanted to encourage you with um, today comes from chapter number 16 and verse 19 through 21. But as I was pondering it, I was really thinking it's really not, I think where most people take it, but really is, uh, where's your heart? What has your heart? And um, you see, Jesus is speaking to religious people who were focused on uh, doing all kinds of things uh, to obtain a righteousness apart from God, but um, their hearts weren't right. Their hearts were full of pride and self-righteousness and arrogance. And that's why they would constantly find themselves in opposition to the Son of God. Uh, I think it was uh, in the last devotion I was talking about how, you know, they were, they had actually had a custom of going around when they were giving alms and uh, they would blow a trumpet and draw attention to themselves. And uh, in between that, the Lord introduces to them uh, what we call the Lord's Prayer. He talks to them about the hypocrisy uh, of their fasting because they were all doing it uh, for show. But in verse 19, he says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where three thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so I see that Jesus is laying out a principle for us that shows us that um, the heart is the point. And uh, what we put our heart in is also uh, what we invest in. And so if we have a heart for the king and the kingdom, well, then uh, we're going to invest there. And when we invest in a church or a ministry or a people, our heart's going to be there. They, they go together. Um, and the world... Uh, in the first century and the world in the 21st century, nothing much has changed. That man uh, tries to find security uh, apart from God. And so he works and labors to store up a treasure for himself on this earth. Uh, he tells us there's no security there. Uh, in the Gospel of Luke, he tells the uh, story uh, about a man who has a wonderful harvest and he tears, tears down his old barn and builds a bigger barn and he thinks, well, I'm just going to eat, uh, drink and be merry and, and then his life is gone. And uh, the Lord uh, in that parable asks, well, you know, what good does it do if you have all the treasures but you lose your soul? See, I don't think Jesus is saying that you shouldn't save for retirement or make sure that you make good financial decisions. I don't think that's what this is about at all. He's telling us, don't let yourself uh, fall in love with the things of the world. Um, John says it just like that. Do not love the world or the things of the world. Uh, Paul tells Timothy, you know, uh, don't let yourself be caught up in the pursuit of treasures or wealth, he says, because uh, by this thing, many have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You see, if we think our security and confidence is uh, what we have in our 401k or retirement program or in savings uh, or gold that we've 
stashed under the bed or whatever. He's saying it can all be stolen. It can all be lost. Um, you know, he says moths and rust because sometimes they would even save up clothing as a matter of uh, saving up wealth. He says, don't let your treasures be here, but store up treasures for yourself in heaven where no one can steal it, where it can't be destroyed, where inflation can't diminish its value, where the stock market doesn't crash. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so I would never uh, pretend to tell you uh, what you should give or how you should give. Um, Jesus, through his spirit, lives in you to show you how he wants to give through you. But I do want to ask you, where's your heart? Where's your treasure? Are you being conscientious to hear his voice tell you how he wants to use the resources he's entrusted to your care to invest in the king and the kingdom? Because if you wonder why your passion for the king and the kingdom, you have apathy towards the church and ministries that reach out to others, it's probably because you're not um, sacrificially giving to those. Paul, he wrote to the, the church and he says, not that I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. It has been the great joy of my life to be able to minister all over the world and to help people in communist countries and people uh, in the jungle areas of Thailand and in, in, in India and Sri Lanka and, uh, to encourage pastors and people with leprosy. And it's been my joy to do that. And I could not have done any of that if people hadn't given sacrificially to help me to go. And as I go and shown and demonstrated and proclaimed the love of Christ and people have entered into his kingdom through the gospel, it's important to remember those who gave to send, they have been laying up for themselves treasures in heaven, fruit that abounds to their account. So be encouraged and as the year comes to a close, be grateful for all that God has blessed you with and be conscientious to lay up some treasures in heaven that your heart might be focused on the king and his kingdom. Have a great day.